Many of you have been asking me to do a behind the scenes video on how I shoot and produce my Cruise Man's Garage videos. Well, I actually do three different types of videos here at Cruise Man's Garage. I do a shop video where I'm actually out working on the bike in my garage. I do a studio video where I'm in a studio with a camera just kind of sitting in front of me. And then I also do moto vlogs where I'm riding the bike with GoPro cameras. Today, we're going the behind the scenes in the shop videos. Today, I'm actually setting up to shoot several different videos. One is going to be the installation of the traction engine guard. And while I'm removing parts on the bike, I'm going to be shooting video for some of my 2018 plus Honda Goldwing maintenance video series. I want to get some in 4K, but the first thing I have to do is clean up the shop. I uh, get a lot of leaves on the ground uh, blowing in from my garage door, so I like to sweep up the floor first and get all these leaves off the floor because I don't want those showing up in the video. So the first step really is just to kind of get the garage uh, cleaned up and organized uh, all the stuff off the shelves that I don't want showing up in the shot. I don't want to have show up in the shot. Um, this is one of the lights that I'm going to use for this video. So I'm going to get it on the ground. This is the chair. Huh? See more leaves. Okay, so some other things I'm going to clean up. This is my GoPro. I'm going to use it for a time lapse. A box that can be thrown away. Just don't want anything up here. I'm going to use this to do some cleanup. Get them out of the way. I like to have all my tools and parts laid out on this tabletop because I will shoot pictures and video of some of these parts as I make the video. Okay, I'm getting ready to shoot the scene where, this is just for the behind the scenes, I'm going to be cleaning the bike. And I just want to get a few shots of what I do here. So you can see I've got my phone, my iPhone set up here uh, to get the shot I'm looking for. I have a LED light over here just to get some more light on the bike and uh, I've got my clean product I'm gonna go get some paper towels and we'll shoot this little scene of me cleaning the bike it'll probably be a time-lapse before I ever get started installing a product or shooting a video I spend quite a bit of time trying to clean up the area of the bike that's going to be in the video as you can see here, it takes quite a while. I did a time lapse. This actually took me about 30 minutes just to get all of this cleaning done. It might seem kind of excessive, but I even try to clean some of the heads of the bolts because these are going to be uh, in the shot in some various close-ups. And I actually try to get the bolts and the screws as clean as I can just because I don't want it to look junky. I think in preparation for shooting this series of videos, I think I spent probably 45 minutes just cleaning the various uh, plastic parts, the bolt heads and so on, uh, just to get ready to shoot the video. 
Okay, so now we're getting set up to do a shot of removing the fog light cover. Nothing too dramatic, but um, what we'll do is we'll have to set our tripod for the iPhone, which is what I'm going to be using to shoot this with. And I will be shooting this in 4K because I want to update my maintenance videos to uh, show 4K. And we're going to actually be using this traction video uh, as a excuse, you might say, <laughs> to reshoot these uh, three or four other videos that go into my maintenance video series. Uh, this way I can reshoot everything in 4K. So I'm going to line this camera up uh, and I've got to make sure I've got enough light because it's all black on black. And getting the lights in the proper position is not easy sometimes because I get in the way and cast a shadow. So sometimes I have to use this little light here to come up from the bottom and give some light coming from underneath. And once I get down on the ground, I'll play around with that a little bit and get my knee pad over here and uh, get my tools. And we'll go ahead and reshoot this fog light cover removal video and we'll do it in 4k i'm going to adjust my light down just a little bit it's a little hot and uh, then you know we'll come back at the end and show you what the final result of this scene looks like so i'm speeding this section up because there's no need for you to sit through the whole thing but basically what i'm doing is i am reviewing what i shoot with each scene now I'm adjusting my focus. I'm trying to lock the focus at certain points. I may have to move my lights around to get the get rid of any shadows. And sometimes I'll have to shoot this same scene three or four times uh, to get it to look the way I want it to look in the final result. It took about 20 minutes to shoot this scene where I'm removing these two bolts from the fog light cover. Now in one section I actually show a close-up of the bolt so that the uh, viewer can see that the bolt has a shoulder underneath the head of the bolt. And then I show removing the lower bolt. So the second shot that I'm going to be setting up for now is showing the actual removal of the fog light cover. And to do that, I'm going to need to reposition the camera and move it over into a little bit different position. I have to change my lighting around. Uh, lighting is the toughest part, because, especially when you're working on the bike, because I tend to get in the way and it casts shadows and I have to adjust these lights to try to compensate for those shadows. Now the iPhone is not perfect for this, but it actually does a pretty good job because it lets you get into some tight places when you're shooting video. And that really is an advantage in some cases. Here I'm just watching to see how this is going to look from this perspective because I'm actually going to be pulling that fog light cover out. And I may actually show this from a couple of different angles and cut between those angles uh, during the shot. Here you can see the camera is kind of to my right and I'm pulling the cover out and I'm trying to see how that's going to look. And occasionally you'll see me tapping on the screen and that's because I'm setting my focal point. Uh, I don't want the camera to move in and out of focus if at all possible. Sometimes when I move my hand in front of the camera, it'll try to focus on my hand. And I'd prefer that it just go ahead and focus on the part that I'm removing. And here I'm showing some of the various uh, clips that hold the fog light cover in place just to give a little bit more detail. Well, let's take a look at the final scene and how it turned out. Here again, this is about 10 seconds worth of video, and it took about 15 to 20 minutes to get it the way I wanted it.
I found it was better just to use the autofocus on the iPhone to focus on these tabs because uh, it was changing the focus as I moved the part around. When it comes time to show the removal of the fog light cover on the right side of the bike, I've decided to do a different perspective. I'm going to go with a really wide shot just to kind of show what it looks like from a completely different angle. Uh, that way people can kind of see it both ways, close up or uh, zoomed out, you might say. Okay, we're done with the fog light cover removal video. Um, now, when we go to put this all back together, I'll come back in and I'll do, I'll shoot a little bit of video on how to replace the fog light covers uh, in a similar fashion. We'll do the same thing in reverse. So here I'm setting up for a shot where I'm uh, basically, all I'm doing is putting this uh, rear screw in the lower cowl and um, I've got my camera here or my uh, <clears throat> my iPhone which is my camera for this shot and I have a different a uh, little bit different stand for my light so I'm going to put the light over here so I get the correct lighting on the shot and again I, I'm trying to be aware of shadows it's not always possible uh, in, a, in, a, in a garage environment where you've got very limited space to work um, so you know I don't have what I would call the perfect lighting setup what I would love to have is one of those lights like you see in a dentist office that pulls down from the ceiling and I can kind of move it wherever I want it but I've never quite been able to get that set up. So what I want to do here is I want to have my camera positioned so that uh, I'm getting some light back here. Where, where our challenge is, is we're dealing with black screws on a black surface. So it's very difficult to see sometimes unless you have a lot of light. So first thing I do is get my camera in position. I may actually do two different shots. I'll do a, a wide shot of this, and then I'll do a close-up showing the screw going in. Um, and the only reason I do that is just because it gives a little bit more dramatic effect. You know, not that we're in drama here, but it makes it um, more visually stimulating for the viewer rather than just sitting there looking at one angle all the time. Okay, so anyway, I've got my uh, light kind of where I want it, and I can see here that I've got room to get my wrench in there without hitting the camera, which is important, but sometimes my hand and the wrench will actually block the shot where you can't see what's going on. So I'm looking in the, I'm looking at my iPhone on my viewer here to see how am I going to do this where you can still see that it's actually a wrench going into a head of a bolt as opposed to just seeing the back of my hand. Uh, that, that's a challenge sometimes. So I might have to reposition the camera a little bit and decide am I going to come in from this side around like this. Um, and that might actually be a better uh, view see if I can kind of square up my camera a little bit and maybe even get in just a little bit tighter. Get it a little more level. I can crank up my light just a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of go over before I start recording what this is going to look like. I'm going to come in from the right side and I'm going to bring that screw in. Now I'm going to get a little bit of a shadow from my hand, but I think I'll still have enough light to do what I want to do. So let me go ahead and start. Uh, first I have to set my focus. I want to lock the focus on this uh, where the bolt is actually going to go in because I don't want the focus to change when my hand comes into the frame or the wrench. I don't want it focusing on that. I just want to maintain focus 
on the bolt. So I'm going to press and hold where I want the focus and I'm just going to let it lock that focus in. And now we'll start recording. I usually give it a couple of seconds. And I'll come in here like this. Okay, I'm not going to completely dial it in all the way. I'm not going to screw it in all the way because I want to get the last two or three turns close up. There's a couple of ways I can do this. I can move the camera closer, but then that sometimes will put the uh, iPhone, uh, it will be in my way. So it'll actually, my wrench will start hitting the camera. Or I could just use the zoom feature, and this particular camera has a three times digital zoom. Uh, which makes it very nice. And I'm going to try that. And then I can get right in on that bolt head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here using the three times zoom. You can see how much closer we're getting here on the image. I'm going to now tilt my camera down just a little so that's a little more in the center of the screen. I also see in my uh, in my phone screen here I see a lot of water spots on this chrome piece. I'm just going to go ahead and clean that off. I should have done that before. That's why I always keep a paper towel or some rags handy just because I don't want it to be, it's not that I'm a neat freak so much, I just don't want it to distract from what I'm trying to show. Okay, that looks much better. Everything looks pretty clean. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lock my focus on the head of that bolt. And all I'm going to do is get a couple of seconds of me just tightening that bolt. And you can see there I've got my focus. I'm going to press and hold. Now it's locked. I'm happy, I'm pretty happy with the light that I'm getting there. And uh, we're going to start recording. And I may only use just the last two or three turns of that. And I can stop recording. So you can see here I've got my light. I've got my iPhone set up on my tripod to the correct height. And uh, that's basically the equipment that I used for this particular shoot. Okay, for this next scene, this might seem a little extreme, but I've got some bolts here and I want to be able to show uh, their different sizes. Uh, you can see I've got them in this bowl and some of these have a little bit smaller shoulder. I'm not sure if you can see that on a GoPro. That's a little bit more uh, smaller shoulder than this bolt. And I'm gonna, I want to show that but again, these bolts are pretty old. They're pretty grungy looking. You can see the head of the bolts are, they're pretty dirty and greasy. And um, I just want to clean them up. I'm going to use a, a household cleaner that I use. I could also use super clean, that would work, but I have this handy, so I'm just going to use this. And I'm actually, this is probably a little extreme, but I'm actually going to use a Scotch Brite. And I'm going to come in here and see if I can't uh, polish these just a little bit so they'll look a little bit nicer on camera. I don't want, again, I don't want the dirt and the grime to distract from the message uh, of the video. Now, you know, it's probably not necessary to do this. I don't know that anybody really cares uh, if the bolts are clean or not because this is a three-year-old motorcycle, four-year-old, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, 
I think it, it makes a better end product. And it doesn't take that long to clean things up. So I'm just going to let these kind of soak. I'll give them all a little quick hit on the uh, Scotch Brite here. The heads or these uh, bolts are silver and not black, like most of the bolts on the Goldwing. So I need to be able to show that they are silver in color. And they were so dirty and grungy and grimy, it was hard to, hard to actually tell. They almost actually looked uh, black. So in this particular case, it was important to see that these particular bolts were actually a silver color. Now, why Honda used silver? Because these do go on a part that's flat black. I'm not sure why they chose to use a silver bolt on a black background, but now you can see kind of the difference of how that looks compared to what we had before. Now, a professional photographer would actually shoot this using flash, but Nobody ever accused me of being a professional. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to get these bolts lined up and I'll take a photo and then I'll show in the video, I'll explain that the two top bolts have the, the larger shoulder. Now I've got my, my continual light source here and I will be shooting this. This is just gonna be a photo, this is not video but I'll shoot it from right here using my iPhone and you can clearly see on that red background, which is a darker background, you can clearly see the larger shoulder versus the shorter shoulder. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here if you enjoyed this video and this type of content, please click on the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the little notification bell. And if you want more behind the scenes on how I do my shop videos, please let me know in the comments down below. Now, I will be doing a behind the scenes of my studio videos and my motor vlogs, and hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight into what it takes to shoot a shop video or a, a video where I'm actually working on the bike.